Hi class, in this lecture, what I want to do is I want to introduce you to the concept of Venn diagrams, which we'll use as a section in the next two, and uh, set operations, so operations on sets. Okay, now this lecture is a little bit long and we have a lot to cover. Okay, so here are all the objectives in this lecture. The first is we want to understand the meaning of what we call the universal set. We want to understand the basic idea of uh, what we call Venn diagrams. We want to use Venn diagrams to visualize relationships between two sets. We want to find the complement of a set. We want to find the intersection of two sets, the union of two sets, and then um, we want to perform operations with sets. Then we want to determine uh, sets involving set operations from Venn diagrams. We want to understand the meaning of and and or as they relate to sets. And then finally, we want to use this formula. Now remember that that italicized n there represents the cardinality or the cardinal number of this a with this giant u of b. So there's some formula for that. All right. So the cardinality, the number of elements in this set right here. We got to determine what that set is first. Okay. A lot to cover in this section. So we'll start with uh, the first part, the universal set. Okay. So all the universal set is. Okay. A universal set is a general set that contains all elements under discussion, okay? So over here, you see this U here, all right? So this concept here, all right, was uh, created by this person named John Venn, okay? And he created what are called Venn diagrams. And this here in its entirety is what's considered a Venn diagram to just show the visual relationship between a bunch of sets. All right, notice how we have some things here, A, U, and then A with this little dash under it. I'll define all those later. All right, but all the universal set is, is it's represented by a rectangle. And this rectangle is supposed to represent all the elements that are under uh, discussion. So if I wanted to talk about um, the, the, the elements um, the, of the natural numbers between 1 and 10, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, we would use this rectangle to, to, to house, to place all the numbers, 1 through 10. And then they would fit somewhere inside these circles that we call um, uh, the sets. And that in entirety would be a Venn diagram. And that'll make more sense as we get through the, the an example. So subsets within the universal sets are depicted by circles or sometimes ovals or other shapes. So if like we're looking at the set of natural numbers between 1 and 10 and we have this set a is the even numbers like the numbers 2 4 6 8 10 would be in here and the odd numbers would be outside that set all right so let's just talk about you know given a very simple venn diagram uh, determining sets from it all right so i'll use this venn diagram to determine each of the following sets so i have the universal set which is this rectangle and everything inside the rectangle Okay, is the elements. So I have a square, a triangle, a dollar sign, and m and a five. Okay. And this circle says, well, hey, there's this set A, okay, and it just contains the square and the triangle. All right, so what is the universal set? Well, the universal set is everything. So it's the square, the triangle, the dollar sign, the m and the five. Well, what's just inside set A here? Well, A is just the square and the triangle. That's it. So what is the set of elements in the universal set that are not in A? So what are outside A? Well, that's just the dollar sign, the M, and the 5. So that's just the set of the dollar sign, the M, and the 5. That's it right there. All right, so let's talk about now disjoint sets and proper subsets. So you have this Venn diagram. Okay, and it's the universal set and it contains a set A and a set B. And notice how they're very separate from each other and don't overlap. So disjoint sets are two sets that have no elements in common. So there would be no elements in here that are in here. Okay, so this might be the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and this might be 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Nothing in common. So proper subsets, all right, so you know all elements of set A are in set B. So if if A is a proper subset, so uh, like the numbers two, three, four, five, and set B then would be the set one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, A is a proper subset of B, so it would be contained within the circle B, okay? 
equal set. So if A is equal to B, then A is a subset of B and B is a subset of A. Well, then the circles would just all be on right on top of each other. What we're going to spend a lot of time talking about in this, in this section and in the next two sections is um, sets with common elements. Okay, so we have this universal set. And I have set A, and I over here I have set B, and they have some elements in common. Like, for example, set A might be the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and set B might be the numbers 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Well, they had two elements in common, so those common elements would be in this overlapping part. So if set A and set B have at least one element in common, then the circles representing the sets must overlap. And this overlap region is where the elements that are in both A and B are found. All right, let's do an example here. Okay, just have this make sense. So I have this universal set, okay? And in set A, uh, what I'm saying, list one, all right, includes the elements A, B, and C. This second part here includes the element D. This third part includes the element E, and this fourth part that's outside the circles includes the elements F and G. Okay, don't think that the Roman numerals one, two, three, and four are part of the, um, the sets. They're just used to delineate them, to tell them a dis difference. Like this is list one, list two, list three, list four. Okay, so what is the universal set? Well, the universal set is just all the elements, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G right there. All right, what are what are the elements of set B? Well, set B is everything in this circle here, okay, and includes the overlapping region. Well, that would be both D and E right there. All right, what is the set of elements in A but not included in B? Well, the set of all elements in A are A, B, C, D, okay? But this overlapping part, this shaded overlapping part here, all right, includes the element D, so that's in both A and B. So this set would just be A, B, and C, and that's it. Okay, I hope this visualization um, had it make sense of how you see where they interact and this overlapping part is both in A and B. Okay, let's find the set of elements in U that are not in B. Okay, so what are the elements not in B? Well, D and E are in B, so not in B would be A, B, C, and then the things out here, F and G. And then what is the set of elements in both A and B? Well, this overlapping second part is what is they have in common in both A and B. So that's just set, that's just the set of element D. That's the only thing they have in common right there. All right, so now let's talk about some other definitions. So the complement of a set. So the definition of the complement of a set is the following. The complement of set A is symbolized as A with a little dash. I'll call that A prime, all right? Or sometimes I'll, I'll either call it A prime or just A complement. A complement is a set of all elements in the universal set that is not in A. So the idea can be expressed in set builder notation as the following. A complement is the set of X such that X is an element in the universal set and X is not an element in A. So if you look here, I have this, this universal set, and I have this set A here. Right? The shaded region, everything that's not in A, right, represents the complement of set A, right, or A complement here with this notation. So A complement is the region that lies outside the circle of A. That's it. Anything that's not in A is the complement. All right, so let's do some examples here. So let U equal the, the universal set be the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. And set A is the numbers 1, 3, 4, and 7. We'll find its complement, A complement. Well, the set of complement A is just all the numbers outside, which is 2, 5, 6, 8, 9, right? So because set A contains the elements 1, 3, 4, and 7, all right, these elements cannot be a member of the complement, so A complement is what's left over, which is 2, 5, 6, 8, and 9. That's the set A complement. Now let's talk about the intersection of two sets. So the intersection of set A and B written as A intersect B, that's how I will say this, A intersect B, is a set of elements common to both sets A and set B. 
So the definition can be expressed in set building notation as the following. A intersection with B is the set of all X such that X is an element of A and at the same time it's an element of XB. So think of the intersection as the overlapping region in those Venn diagrams. All right, so let's look at this. All right, so I've got these two sets. The first one, set 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. I want to find its intersection with sets 6, 8, 10, and 12. Well, what do they have in common? They both have in common an 8 and a 10, right? So 8 and 10, that's what's overlapping between the two sets. That's its intersection. Look at this one. 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, intersection with 2, 4, 6, and 8. They have nothing in common, so its intersection is the null set. This one's weird. Intersect the set of the numbers 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, intersect it with the null set. Well, what do they have in common? Nothing. Nothing. So the intersection with the null set is always just the null set itself. They have nothing in common. There's no elements. In there. All right, let's talk about the union of two sets. So the union of two sets A and B is written as A union B is a set of elements that are members of set A or of set B or of both sets. So it's kind of think of it as the joining or mushing of two sets. So this definition can be expressed in set builder notation as the following. A union with B is the set of X such that X is an element of A or X is an element of B. It just has to be in one of the two sets. So let's look at this. Find the following unions. So I want to union the set 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 with set 6, 8, 10, and 12. Well, basically what you're going to do is you're going to put the two sets together, but since there's already an 8 in this set, you're not going to include this 8. Since there's already a 10, you're not going to write it twice. So the union is just 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. So just push the two sets together, and whatever they have in common, you only have to write once. So if you do this one, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, union with 2, 4, 6, 8. You just push the two sets together. I hate to say the word add the two sets together, but kind of what you're doing. You're combining them. And this is just the set of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. You're just unioning them together. You're pushing them together. So if you union 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9 with the null set, well, you're going to take this set and combine it with the elements in the null set. Well, there's no elements in the null set, so it's just this original set right here. All right, so when you're working with the empty set, when you're talking about the intersection and union, for any set A, A intersect with the empty set is always the empty set because they have nothing in common. A union with the empty set, it's just whatever the original set A is. So notice the difference here. A intersect the null set is the null set, and A union, the null set, is just the A, whatever the set A is. That's it. All right, let's talk about performing uh, set operations. So some problems involve more than one set operation. Okay, these set no notation specifies the order in which we perform these operations. All right, so always begin by performing any operations inside parentheses, just like you would with uh, arithmetic like the, the PEMDAS, always perform what's inside the parentheses first. All right, so I'm given the following. I've got the universal set as the numbers 1 through 10. A is 1, 3, 7, and 9. B is 3, 7, 8, and 10. So I want to find A, find A union with set B, and then it's complement. So first off, find out what um, A union B is. So A union B, combining these two sets, is the set 1, 3, 7, 8, 9, and 10. But then now I want to take its complement. Okay, so the complement is what is outside of that set. Well, what's outside of this set, right, is the elements that are in the universal set that are not in this set, which is the elements 2, 4, 5, and 6. That's what's left over. So I found the union, and then I took the complement of it. Let's try this one. A complement intersection with B complement. Okay, so you have to find the complement of A first. So the complement of A is what's left over. So 
If A is 1, 3, 7, and 9, its complement would be 2, 4, 5, 6, 8, and 10. It's what's outside. Find B complement. B complement would be 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, and 9. Now you have to find their intersection. Well, what elements do they have in common? It looks like 2, 4, 5, and 6. So A complement intersection with B complement would just be the set of 2, 4, 5, and 6. So notice how I did this piecemeal. I broke it down. All right, let's try this with Venn diagrams. It's got a bunch of weird stuff in it. Okay, so use the diagram to determine each of the following sets. All right, so remember the Roman numerals designate the lists. So set A is including pi e square root of 2 square root of 1. Set B is square root of 2 square root of wrong 1 square root of negative 1. E to the pi i, 10 to the 100, and 2 raised to this n sub 0. Okay, and outside of that, list 4 is the number 666. So I want to find all this crazy stuff here. All right, well, first off, I want to find A union B. Okay, well, that's sets of elements in A or B or both. So that would be list one, two, or three. So it would include all of this. A union B complement. Well, that would be all the elements in U that are not in A union B. So it would be what's outside of this blue stuff, which would just be list four, which would be this number. A intersection would be. So this is the set of elements in both A and B. Well, where do they intersect? Where do they overlap? Well, that's in list two. So it would just be the set of square root of two, square root of negative one. Take the complement of that. So A union B complement. Well, it's everything that's not in this list. Okay. So what's not in this list would be list one, three, and four, which is this set right here. So this one's crazy. The complement of A intersection with B. So this is, the, this is the set of elements not in A and R and B, okay? So not in A, so anything not in A, so that would be list three and four, but in B, so that would just be list three. So it would just be these three crazy numbers. Now, A intersection, or excuse me, A union with B complement. So this is a set of elements in A or, because you're unioning it, or not in B. So Elements in set A, right here, would be list 1 and 2. And then what's left over or not in B, well, that would be list 4. So it would be list 1, 2, and 4, or just these guys right here. So the visual here helped us find this. All right, so let's talk about sets and precise use of everyday English. So set operations in Venn diagram provide precise way for organizing, classifying, and describing the vast array of sets and subsets we encounter every day. So when you hear the word or, this refers to the union of sets. And when you hear and, this refers to the intersection. Okay, so or is the union of A or B, so it should be A union B. And refers to the intersection, so A and B would be A intersect B. All right, so let's talk about the cardinal number of union of two finite sets. So the formula for the cardinal number of the union of two finite sets, so the number of elements that are in A union B, is the number of elements in A plus the number of elements in B. But in this case, you would be double counting because you'd be counting the number of elements and A and B. Okay. Twice. So you have to subtract away the number of elements that are in A intersection B. Okay. So think about it this the number of elements in A or B is equal to the number of elements in A plus the number of elements in B, but you have to minus the number of elements in both A and B. All right, let's do an example. So some of the results of an on campus blood drive. Um, survey indicate 490 students were willing to donate blood. All right, 340 students were willing to help serve a free breakfast to blood donors, and 120 students were willing to do both. Okay, so how many students were willing to donate blood or serve breakfast? You have to be careful. You just can't add these two together because if you do, you'd be double counting these 120 students. All right, so the number of blood donors or served breakfast is equal to the number of blood donors plus the number who served breakfast 
you have to subtract away the number of blood donors and serve breakfast. So it would be 490 plus 340 minus the 120 because you're double counting. So that would be 830 minus 120. So there would be a 710 willing to do um, to serve, to be a blood donor or serve breakfast. All right, we're going to continue more with uh, Venn diagrams and um, uh, sets in the previous, in the coming two uh, sections as well.